Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again. The second quarter earnings call for 2016 has happened for AMD, and during which, of course, companies are expected to, to give information to inspire investor confidence. So, with this said, AMD have given us a couple of really interesting pieces of news. One pertains to Zen regarding the shipment forecasts for the processor, we'll get to that in a moment, and also the fact that AMD have revealed that one of the design wins, you might recall that it's been touted around the internet for some time now, was actually Project Scorpio, which was pretty expected. So I'm going to tackle that one first because it's the quickest. Last quarter at E3, Microsoft announced two new members of the Xbox One family, powered by AMD, said Dr. Lisa Su. The Xbox One S is the slimmest Xbox console ever, and the first to support HDR, and the system is expected to go on sale in the coming weeks. Microsoft also announced their next generation games console codename Project Scorpio for 2017 holiday. Project Scorpio is designed to be a fully compatible with the existing Xbox One hardware, while leveraging AMD's leadership in gaming technology to create more immersive 4K and VR gaming experiences. Project Scorpio is one of the semi-custom design wins we communicated previously. Now, she did stop short of giving any additional information regarding the Scorpio. So for those of you wondering what the processor specs are or any of that, we don't know. Um, we wouldn't disclose anything that's incre incrementally more than what our customer has disclosed. So I think Microsoft to talk about their goals for Project Scorpio and I think we are in support of those goals. Given the performance level, you would imagine there is more capability on chip, but I wouldn't want to go more into that is what she said. Now we have done a full Project Scorpio analysis, I'll try to remember to link it in the video description, if not you could just type or search on the channel um, Project Scorpio analysis and it'll pop right up and I've gone exhaustively into Project Scorpio. I'm also going to be tackling Neo over the next day or so. I've almost finished with the GTX 1070 review, it's been a lot longer than normal because of a uh, computer failure or well, hard drive failure more specifically, but that that's it, it wasn't fun. Let's just let's just say that it wasn't fun But um, yeah, anyway, let's go on with the Zen news because I'm sure most of you are very interested in Zen So for the three people on the planet that aren't familiar with what Zen is it is the high-end processor Which AMD are going to be bringing into the market which is said to compete with Intel's latest processors AMD are basically marketing this processor at the, um, I guess the elevator pitch would be Intel-like performance but with an AMD price point. That would probably be their, there you go AMD, I should be a marketing guy. But anyway, they have basically said that they want to compete in the desktop space and the server space. But one thing that's been a bit of a question mark is the release date. Now there have been some statements from AMD telling us that the shipping in large volume to, to partners would occur during the third quarter of this year, 2016, in case you're watching this in the distant future, in which case you probably know when the uh, Zen was released. But Lisa Sue has since recanted a little on this and she said, and I quote, We have been very focused on the server launch for the first half of 2017. Desktop should launch before that. In terms of true volume availability, I believe that that will be the first quarter of 2017. We may ship limited volume towards the end of the fourth quarter based upon how the bringing up goes and customer readiness, end quote. Now, once again, that, just to clarify, was during the uh, earnings call for AMD. A translation for all of this essentially is that AMD are going to be shipping limited volumes, limited numbers, of their Zen chips to partners. So that would obviously be any company like, for example, the Dells of the world, who would possibly be interested in saying, hey, we want to be offering Zen based PCs for our customers to purchase. There also may be some which trickle down to retailers, but it's possible based upon yields, based upon a dozen different factors that AMD may decide to hold off on high volume shipments 
What they're probably going to be doing is not rushing. What they seem to be doing is focusing primarily on getting the chip right, making sure that it's getting the highest clock speeds possible, making sure that they've got the best yields possible, and basically making sure that the processor doesn't fail to deliver. At least that's their hopes. Whether that's actually true or not, well, unfortunately only time will tell. Now, what we do know are some details regarding the processor. Now, just to clarify, because you may hear phrases such as Summit Ridge, you may hear phrases like FX, you may hear phrases like Zen. Now, I just want to clarify this because some people have been confused regarding what the hell this is. So Zen is the architecture name. It's like saying Polaris for the RX 480. It's not the name of the processor necessarily, it's the name of the actual architecture. For most folks who are interested in buying a Zen processor, you're going to want to buy Summit Ridge. Summit Ridge is the family of FX processors which are going to be utilized in a PC. Well, a regular PC. Servers will have other things and blah blah blah. Now, what's important to note with this is the maximum configuration is 8 cores, 16 threads. There is no graphics architecture built into this. This is not an APU, it is not a SOC. What this means is, if you do not have a discrete graphics card, you're fucked. Uh, the PC will not boot. You will not be able to get any monitor signal. This is not a bad thing. But the reason they're going this route is because putting those cores on a die eats up space. So what they're instead doing is saying, no, instead we want to focus putting additional um, cache or additional processor cores or whatever they're doing onto that space rather than putting a bunch of GCN units, a bunch of compute units, which would be for graphics. Now, they will most likely be cutting down the number of uh, Zen cores for, let's say, APUs and releasing APU variants of that, which of course will come with GCN, uh, GCN units, but typically it's not going to. I also want to clarify, it will of course be using DDR4 memory, much like the latest Intel processors like for example Kaby Lake and Skylake and all of that stuff. Speaking of Kaby Lake, Intel will be introducing Kaby Lake, which is the seventh generation. It's going to have about five to ten percent improvement compared to Skylake, which is the current desktop processor you can get from Intel. It, however, is going to have a few caveats. Its maximum configuration is four cores and eight threads, and it's going to have a very similar feature set to the current Skylake. It's just going to have a few optional extras and a, a little bit here and there, but it does have integrated graphics built in. So I guess the question most of you are going to ask immediately is, well, okay, how is Zen going to perform? Well, unfortunately, there are some questions which we can't answer exactly because ultimately I am not in AMD's testing labs and even if I was to teleport in there undercover with a cloak at let's say 3 a.m. when there's no one around and all of the security cameras were somehow looped and on top of that I managed to sneak in there, log into their systems, run a whole bunch of benchmarks, there's a possibility I still wouldn't know what the performance is for the processors simply because they may not have actually settled on the final clock speeds. For example, there are some engineering samples that have been touted at the moment and those clock speeds are like 3 to 3.5 gigahertz if memory serves. Now, are they going to be final clock speeds? Your guess is as good as mine, because they could be 4 gigahertz, they could be 50 gigahertz, and obviously they won't be the latter, but you get my point. We don't know what the final production silicon clock speeds are, and that, unfortunately, is down to the bringing up phase, which AMD are telling us that they're currently in. But, AMD have given us a couple of performance slides which do give an indication of the level of performance of the processor. These are IPC improvements. Now, the reason I stress IPC is because it's based upon the processor running at the same clock speed with the same number of cores. 
So basically, the easiest way to look at this is if you have a processor, let's say you have processor A, processor B, processor A is running at one gigahertz, processor B is running at one gigahertz, but processor B has a higher IPC, it's gonna have higher performance. So for example, it may be, in this case, they're telling us it's gonna have a 40% improvement um, over excavator, I'll get into that in a second, it would mean the excavator would have to be clocked at 1.4 gigahertz for, for it to be competitive. So first of all, what the hell is excavator? What the hell is a Rochi? I'm gonna talk about excavator first because they are specifically refer, referring to the actual processor core here, the actual architecture, and not the platform, which once again is Summit. So sticking to Zen versus excavator, Excavator has been seen in a couple of different processors, including the latest Athlon, which conveniently I did actually review a while back. The Athlon X484 845, excuse me, runs using four excavator cores, and those run at 3.8 gigahertz if it's turbo, or 3.5 gigahertz as a base frequency. You can similarly overclock that to about four gigahertz ish. Multiplier locks, but you can raise the FSB to, I believe, 105, if memory serves. It was a while back that I reviewed this. So what you could do, in a theoretical world, is that you could take our um, Athlon X484-5 overclock scores for, let's say, Cinebench, which are 343, that's what we managed to achieve. Obviously, you know, there are a few variances based upon memory timings and the motherboard you're using, but let's just, for the sake of this video, say it was 343. You could take that, multiply it by 1.4, in other words, a 40% gain, which gets you to around 480. That would essentially mean that if you were to run four only four Zen cores with no hyper-threading enabled at exactly the same clock speed, which is just shy of four gigahertz, you theoretically would get about 480 points to it. There are some caveats to that, including the fact that, well, that's taking AMD's word that it's 40%. It could be 40% based upon certain tasks. It could be it's 40% plus some, it's based upon some tasks may naturally run faster on the processor than others. And it's also based upon situations where we're not memory bandwidth limited, for example, DDR4. We're also basing it upon the fact that, well, we've got a whole bunch more threads now available. And finally, and perhaps the biggest one, we don't know the final clocks of Zen. And there are a couple of other issues that we could start doing this whole uh, mathematics on. But just for a slight off the cuff remark, that is roughly within the performance gamut of a Haswell ish level of uh, pr process performance. So something along the lines of 4670K, roughly. But once again, architecture performance does make a big difference. And some processor architectures just scale better with certain benchmarks or certain applications. So. Basically, what I'm saying is that these numbers are very, very rough. So we could still see a larger goal, a larger gap in performance with Cinebench, or we could still see a smaller. But switching to Orochi for a moment, Orochi was actually an older processor in the lineup, and it's actually a little weird because there are so many derivatives and so many bloody um, families of the bulldozer architecture which was introduced way back then. So now they basically went for bulldozer, the pile driver, the steamroller, and now once again we're at excavator, which is the Athlons. So pile driver, just for those of you who are not familiar, is the FX8350 and a whole bunch of other processors which are pretty well established. And it goes up to the FX5, sorry, FX9590. But the bulldozers, the highest level is the FX8150. So I'm just going to say that again. The Orochi is part of the bulldozer architecture, the original bulldozer architecture. And that's what AMD are basing the, um, the slide on. Unfortunately, 
it's also a bit difficult to make assumptions on that because they haven't given any examples of the products that they're comparing it to. Now what we do know is the process does work. Um, they've demonstrated it with the likes of Doom and it's run videos. Now the video one wasn't that impressive to me if I'm totally honest because video doesn't really require that amount of CPU power to run, especially now with a lot of the decoders and stuff being shunted onto the GPU anyway. But the Doom performance was more interesting. Unfortunately, we didn't get a frame rate counter. We also don't know what graphics card was used. So even if we did get a frame rate counter, because we don't know the settings and the GPU used, it doesn't make a difference. Personally, I believe that Zen is going to be an improvement over the current generation of processors. I think that AMD are not, however, going to win single thread performance. So I think really if an individual is looking for a processor which let's say let's say single core performance is paramount, which is to be fair, a lot of those applications from, let's say, five years ago. But if single core performance is paramount, then a 6700K or whatever the new cable lakes are going to end up being called, I forgot offhand, to be honest, they're probably going to be the better processor. On the other hand, if you're someone who also does a lot of multimedia work, you require a lot of processing power, generally speaking, and 16 threads on a cheap price, and ultimately, it's not just down to performance. For example, and I'm once again pulling numbers out of my ass, but let's say that Intel introduced KB Lake at like, I'm just going to use British pound prices here before I start going nuts, but let's say that they introduced KB Lake, the 6700K replacement, and let's say that that's 330 great British pounds, and let's say Zen comes out, has a, I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass once again, a 20%, 15% lower performance per core, but you get an additional four cores or eight threads and that comes in at like 250 pounds and the platform prices are very similar so in other words you're going to be coughing up the same amount of money for the motherboard and all of that stuff ddr4 memory is obviously going to be interchangeable you might be very tempted to say well gee i'd rather save like 80 pounds get 15 percent less performance on a single thread but have the ability to let's say run a whole bunch of tasks and probably get higher performance because you've got those extra threads if you are running applications which are multi-threaded so what i'd probably say to you in a very short too long didn't read version it's a cool processor i'm looking forward to seeing what amd really do and ultimately benchmarks based upon guest numbers don't necessarily equate to what the processor really does and it's possible nvidia have been rather cagey of performance before they have not actually told us the truth in a lot of cases amd have done the same thing they've been really cagey and so have microsoft with uh, various projects so have sony um so have intel essentially companies sometimes and nintendo one of the most famous Companies sometimes are very cagey, they don't actually tell you, and instead they're just giving you the minimum performance, or it's possible that they are way overshooting the performance. Anyway, um, I think I've rattled on long enough, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.